is how I like to draw my cakes. I start with an oval that's tilted on its side. This is also called an ellipse. From the oval, I draw parallel lines going down to the base of the cake, and then I match the curve on the bottom. The whole cake is just a series of parallel lines and matching angles. So if you keep monitoring those angles and curves and lines to make sure that they're parallel and matched up, you'll be good to go. I'm drawing with a white colored pencil so that you can see in this video, but you'll be drawing with a pencil so that you can erase any mistakes as you make them. Just be sure no matter what tool you're using to draw, you're drawing super duper lightly. Now we want to draw a shadow on our cake. We always want to make um, sure that the light source is coming from one direction. So if I pretend that the light source is coming from the right side of this video, then the shadow should always be on the left side of the cake. I'm just drawing myself basic guidelines to make sure that I know to shade there later once we use oil pastels. I'm gonna grab a ruler and draw a horizon line in the background that'll make it seem like this cake is sitting on a table or something like that. Now it's time to choose your colors. I like to start with two to three colors and white as a highlight. So this side is where the light source comes in, so this is gonna be the lighter side of the cake. I'm using yellow and orange and white for my highlight and then I'm really carefully blending over the colors and overlapping them until I get the look that I want. Um, it's harder to add white as you go, so if you want an area to have a lot of white, I recommend using the white first and then blending over the white with your remaining colors. This is a process and it takes some time until you feel like you get it right. But you need to pick colors that blend well together, such as yellow and orange dark blue, light blue, dark green, light green, things like that. So once you've colored the outside of your cake, I'm gonna make 
some more shadows and I can't help but go back and kind of fix things as I go. But now it's time to focus on the inside of the cake. I've chosen white, light blue, and dark blue because this is gonna give a really cool, kind of like a shadow glowing effect. So you'll see how I use the white first because like I said, white is best when it's used first. It's easier to go over the white than to add it in later. So all I've been doing is adding a few more details. It's hard for me to resist adding shadows and highlights as I go. But it's time to move on to the toppings of your cake. So whatever you decided to draw for toppings, go ahead and shade and highlight those as well. I made mine a cherry, so I just used red and I used white as a highlight. Don't forget to even add a shadow onto your toppings of your cake. That's gonna make it look really realistic and it needs a highlight too so that it really pops off the page. Now it's pretty easy. You're just gonna color the table or whatever surface your cake is standing on. I didn't draw a plate so I don't have to worry about that. I'm choosing light green so my shadows will be done in a darker green and I'm just gonna color away and then work on adding my shadows with a few darker greens to really make it look three-dimensional. The last step is gonna to be to color in the wall and the background. At this point, your hand is probably pretty tired and maybe even cramping up on you, but you can do it. I'm just adding a few last touches, little highlights, little shadows where I think it, it needs it, and you're done. Great job.